Mr. and guests, we will begin our broadcast in about three minutes. So sit back, relax, and we'll begin in about three minutes. What is always the problem? While we're waiting, this is a perfect opportunity for you to ask any questions that you may have to our panel. You can do so by tweeting your questions to us at FBLA underscore national. You can also uh, post questions in the Facebook event page on Facebook. You can Facebook message them to us at FBLA National Center or even post it in the video comments below in YouTube. Avenues you can ask your questions. We'll get started here in about two minutes time. Until you later on the unit, go past it. Once again, for those of you joining us, we'll get started in about one minute with, with the webinar. All right. Well, good evening, FBLA, PBL members, advisors, and guests. Welcome to our Wednesday webinar series, and today's webinar is Getting the Competitive Edge in Our Competitive Events. We have had a lot of people register for this webinar, and we're very excited that we have a lot of pre-asked questions from you all, but we'd also like to remind you that you can ask questions at any time during the broadcast. You can do so via tweeting at us at FBLA underscore national or PBL underscore national. You can also comment under this video in the YouTube video comments feed or on the Facebook event. All those are live broadcasted to us so we can make sure those questions are asked to our panel live. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our panel. First off, we have Miss Barbara Small, our education director, who was an FBLA advisor for many, many years, and then came on as national staff in Reston, Virginia. And then we also have Carla Bolton, who is the Missouri FBLA PBL state chair in Jefferson City, Missouri. She also serves a national role as part of our NAP committee, NAP committee. No, that doesn't mean she's all day. It means that she's a part of our national awards program committee. And the NAP committee actually helps determine um, rules and new competitive events for the upcoming year. So we're very excited to have both of them on our webinar today. And I'm going to go ahead and pass over the webinar to these ladies. At the end, we'll answer your questions, so be sure to get those in. Barbara? Okay, thank you, Donnie. Thank you all for coming on tonight. Um, it's 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and I know many of you are from all different parts of the country. We also have a, quite a variety of people. We have PBL advisors, students, we have FBLA advisor students, and we may even have a few middle-level uh, advisors. But I'd like to welcome you all. What I want to talk to you about tonight is about your state conference. I need for you to understand that I deal with the national conference, and I can tell you everything you want to know once you win at your state. But we're trying to give you some information here to help you move ahead for your state conference. The biggest thing I can tell you right now, the most important, is please review your state guidelines. Your state guidelines may vary a little bit from the national guidelines. For example, I know in many states a FBLA student as well as a PBL student may be in more than one or two or three events. And at the national level that's not true. So you really do need to check with your state to follow to see what's happening. 
Also, the state may not do two parts of an exam. For uh, example, again, let's say for FBLA entrepreneurship or for PBL could be business decision making, you may only take the written test and may not do a performance event. Again, this is a state issue, so please, please check with your state. However, one of the biggest questions we have is where do I go to get materials to study with, which I'm going to come back to in a minute. But the first thing I want to talk to you about is the changes that we have for this year. Hopefully you know these, but just in case you don't, I just want to remind you. For example, number one, e-business and website design have been moved to seven minutes. So when you present that in both e-business, which is for only FBLA, but websites for both, both groups, is you now have seven minutes to present your website. Keep in mind, those websites have always been prejudged, so you're just presenting. And you have to make sure you know what the rating sheet looks like. Polymetry procedure this year, uh, we are using the 11th edition of Robert's Rules, which just came out this fall. So make sure you have a copy. There aren't that many changes, but there might be a few. This is the big one that is good for both FBLA and PBL. Previously, let's take, for example, website design. It could be a one to three member event. Individually, let's say an individual took it uh, last year in website design, but he wants now, he or she wants to be, compete on a team. That individual now can compete on that team this year, so it's the second round. The big change is, let's say last year, um, Johnny competed as a team member, he may now compete as an individual. So that it goes both ways, and that's a big, big difference this year. Um, for FBLA, just another thing, digital design promotion has been promoted. It's a one to three member team. For PBL, we have two changes. One is retired event. Computer gaming has been retired. There just weren't enough entries to keep it going as a national event. And we also changed the name for future business teacher to future business educator, which then uh, encompasses from middle school to post-secondary school. So anyone that's going to teaching, we just wanted to change the name. However, for FBLA, we do have three pilot events that are very important. And a student be, can may be in one of the pilot events as well as one other competitive event at the national conference. The three pilot events that I'm going to talk about go from the local level to the national level. So at your state, you won't be competing in any of these pilot events at the state. One pilot event closes on, on Monday, the 11th, which is the um, Life Smarts Challenge. And from this challenge, we take the top nine teams in the fall challenge as well as the spring challenge, which will advance to the national conference. You will be notified shortly within the next week if you, if you are one of those teams. We also have two pilot events, which there's still time to sign up for, sponsored by CertiPort, the Microsoft Office Specialist Exams uh, for Mouse and Excel. They're taken at the local level. The top three scores uh, with time and number correct are from each state are eligible then compete at nationals. So this is exciting. So you still have till the end of March to sign up for it at the local level. It does cost you money if your school is not a partner or doesn't have vouchers. So there is some cost to it for taking the exams, but there are some great opportunities for you to move on to the national competition. Now let's get back to where can I find out more information about what's happening and how to study for an event. You must go to our website. If you go to the national website at fbla-pbl.org and click on either FBLA or PBL at the top and go to competitive events. We added for FBLA and PBL what we call a reference guide. This guide will show you all your, all your guidelines, your rating sheets. It will also show you what we call performance indicators, which gives you more detail as to what your objective test will cover. It gives you some sample questions, a sample case study, as well as for some of the pr presentation events, it even gives you a video to watch. So that's going to be one of your biggest things to do, or most important ways to go. Another thing, uh, just go a couple of the events, reports. Uh, we have several reports for PBL, Small Business Management, Community Service. For FBLA, we have five reports. When you're doing a report, please make sure you follow the guidelines. Where people lose points is the report cover, not sending the number of copies required, and more than 30 pages. As simple as that. You follow that, you look at your rating sheet, you'll make an A on that test. Um, objective test, again, look at your performance standards, how to study, look, go to textbooks, find a lot of textbooks from your teachers, 
review your glossary words, review your end of chapter uh, summaries, and that will help you with that. Um, when you're looking at collaborative events, um, business decision making for PBL, entrepreneurship for FBLA, or collaborative tests, when we have two or three member teams, and they'll sit and take one Scantron test or one uh, online test on, at Nationals on the computer, and you'll be able to collaborate. You'll be able to talk to each other. And you must have the full team there to take that test. Let's talk a little about interview events. How can I get ready for an interview event? The one thing I want to tell you, job interview for FBLA. You are to apply to the Merit Corporation, which is a fictitious company. Think of a job that you're qualified for. Make uh, Merit Corporation a company of your choice. You can design what type of company is. Is it a computer company? Is it is is it a HR company? Um, is it you know you have all different? Is it a retail company? That's up to you to decide what Merit Corporation is. But apply for a position that you are qualified to do when you graduate high school or intern or part time. Very very important for PBL. You select your own company to go to. Um, also, make sure that you do lots of talk um, interviews. Get some mock interviews set up. Go to the website and find Google out and get some interview questions to practice. Practice is, is the best way you're going to do for interviews. And last but not least is the role play. This is something new that we just started a couple years ago. Where on most of the role play events, you have a seven minute prep. Uh, seven minute presentation, 20 minute prep time, and the judges are going to interact with you. So don't be surprised when the judges talk to you or not. And if like help desk, they could be a very irate customer. So you have to be able to work with all of the people. Call it, Carla, any other comments? Carla? Unmute my microphone. I think those are um, all really good ideas. Um, the objective tests are, um, you know, online one-shot deals. Using the online event study guides is is the key. And Donnie, you wanna and Troy I, are going to. Uh, I'm gonna go out and kind of show everybody where I go when I want to find this yeah. information. Yeah, if you could actually do that, if uh, for those of you watching. What Carla's going to do is she's actually going to navigate to our website and open up a screen share here. And as you can see, this is our national website, which you all know very well. Now, can you show us how you're going to get to find out more about the competitive events like Barbara was talking about? Sure. As you can see that at the top here we have FBLA middle level and then Phi Beta Lambda. So I'll just go to FBLA here since it's first. And I can click on the competitive events link here. And then that brings up several additional links for us to go to. Um, competitive events online reference guide I'll go to in a minute, but these two links right here, the event guidelines, the rating sheets on top of the topic are really key for knowing what to do. If you're going to do a report like Barbara was talking about, you need to know what the rating sheet is going to actually say and what you're going to be judged on. So those are really key things to know what your event guidelines and what the rating sheet looks like. But if you just want a quick snatch of, of an event, you know exactly what event you're looking for. I really like this new thing that's been developed. It's the Competitive Event Online Reference Guide. And like we were talking before, um, some additional uh, materials are here for us with the performance indicators. And for online testers, this is key. You know exactly what to test for the um, event guidelines here, but then if I click on this performance indicator, and for the advisors listening out here, this is really helpful, and for the students and members as well, these are the things that are going, that you're going to be tested on, so if you can look at this indicator list and say, yep, I know that, yes, I could do that and do that, then you'll know that you're prepared for that test. So that's something that I really like about that, and um, we have several YouTube clips available as well. So there are a lot of things here for FBLA. Um, competitive event recognition for middle levels, a little bit different because there are not as many events, but they still have here a good link on the middle level achievement program that will take you to those events for the middle level folks. And for our Phi Beta Lambda, again there's the online reference guide, rating sheets, ranking sheets. As you can see I've already been here today since mine is a different color. So really good 
resources for our people right here online for free to get a good start on how to prepare. And, and one more thing I would mention too, um, advisors push to your students, but especially for the students so they have access to this information. Um, you know, a growing trend are smartphones. And with our new iPhone app, you can actually navigate, I don't know if you can see it well, but navigate to our competitions, choose a section, and actually choose an event. For example, here's a business communication. We actually have the um, event guideline sheets on here, along with practice questions and the performance indicators that we're actually looking for. And that's all within our new iPhone app, too, that you can download from the App Store. Um, so there was our little shameless plug for that. But I'll, back to you, Barbara, for the rest of the presentation. Okay, now we're ready for questions, I think. Okay, that's great. Um, and one more thing, you can also download that app just by going to our homepage. It is on fbla-pbl.org. So before I start asking questions, I want to remind everyone, no question is stupid. We'd love to hear yours. Go ahead and tweet it to us at fbla underscore national. Posted it in the YouTube video comments or in the event page on Facebook. We're checking all of them constantly. And we also have some pre-submitted questions. But first, we're going to ask a question that was asked live by Candy. Uh, Andy is a PBL member in Illinois, and she wants to know, in your opinions, what is the most common mistake in job interviews? What is the most common mistake that both an FBLA or PBL member is going to make in job interviews? Could you repeat that? I'm having trouble. I'm having some breakups in, in the voice, so could you sure. repeat that question? I'm sorry. The most common mistake an FBLA or PBL member can make in job interview? Oh, okay. Um, number one is not being truthful on your, on your resume. Um, number two is not telling, you've got to know what job you're applying for. They're, the judge is going to say, so why are you interested in this job? Or what, you know, and, and you, so you have to be able to do, what do you know about the company? So make sure you know something about the company. Again, remember it's fictitious. So, so come up with what type of company you're applying for. That's very, very important. Also, on your resume or in your letter of application, make sure you state what your job uh, title is, what, your, what job you're applying for. I just interviewed some, uh, some job applications in my state uh, to help out in, my in one of my regional meetings, and many of the resumes didn't even indicate what job they were applying for, so how do I know how to interview them? So that's very, very, very important. Also, practice. Practice makes perfect. And you know, a tip or a little um, trick of the trade mm -hmm. that I know my advisor in high school always had me do was in high school, um, oftentimes the only position that you're eligible for with a big company is an intern. And there's nothing wrong with applying for an internship position, um, especially with the qualifications that you have as a high schooler. So you don't want to be applying for CEO in your first job. Um, next question I have is from... Brian in Wisconsin PBL, he wants to know what unique qualities do judges look for while students give presentations? Again, I Carl, I'd like your answer. I'm just having trouble hearing. Okay. I think that one of the things that judges look for first and foremost in a group presentation is that all group members participate equally. Um, I think that that's very important that the um, presentation allows each member to present equally and also on um, those events that have the question and answer session I think it's very important that one team member doesn't dominate um, the answer session for events that are um, singles or where only one person is doing a presentation I think being confident which is similar for everything and also you can't go wrong by shaking the judge's hands when you enter or when you leave. That's that's just a little leg up and a little bit of bonus points. Great. Um, actually, another question that's going to tie close to that, we just got asked from, from Twitter, um, and they want to know what is a uh, tip for job interview in the performance aspect, so not in choosing the position or the resume. Um, and it sounds like... You gave one of them again, but give one more tip for job interview with performing. One thing, one thing would be eye contact. 
it's so important when you're talking or interviewing someone to have direct eye contact with that person. It's horrible when, when you're looking down. Make sure you speak up and speak slowly and answer the question. If you don't know an answer, if you have to think about it, just say, could you please repeat the question? That gives you a couple seconds to think again. So rather than saying, I don't know the answer, and you have to come up with an answer, also make them short. You don't want to go on and on and on and on because it is a time thing. And they, you just say what's asked of you and then just go on to the next question. Great answer. The next question uh, comes from Rachel in Wisconsin FBLA. She wants to know what is the best way to prepare for the impromptu speaking event? For instance, is there any way to predict general topics that may be included in the prompt? Or are there any specific things that the are looking for in the speaker and in the answer? Carla, I'm going to turn it over to you right now again. Having a set opening and perhaps a closing so that no matter what the topic is that you can start and end with confidence that you know what you're going to say already. Also, again, the good eye contact with your judges is key and knowing that in general the topics revolve around our FBLA goals and that's not a hundred percent case but in most cases it, it revolves around our goals so knowing a lot of um, avenues that you might take if you're presented with a, a goal or a topic revolving around a goal would help you uh, get an early start on that 10 minute prep time. Awesome. Uh, our next question is from Eva in New Jersey FBLA. They want to know what the best way to prepare for the virtual business challenges um, and also will the competition file at nationals be similar to the one they use for the qualifiers? Okay, virtual business challenge is done at the local level. It's done at your school. We've already had a fall challenge and the spring challenge end, ended Friday. I just talked to the people in fact this morning about it. Um, it's all a simulation. I, I really don't know how to your practice for it. It's just a simulation. Some schools have it. Um, it's over with. On site what will happen is again the top eight teams but one from each state in each challenge will be invited to come to nationals. And remember, this is your event, so you can't be in another event in from the virtual business challenge. You will compete as everyone will compete. And they have like it's almost like the uh, 64 basketball, you know, as we're getting ready for the basketball season to, to end. Um, you'll have you'll have brackets. So you'll be competing actually in the exhibit hall um, and you'll have seven you'll have several times to compete in brackets till you get down to the finals and then the top ten win. Great. I um, have another live question that just came in from Rachel via our YouTube question, or actually I just got two more questions, but Rachel uh, wants to know are there any specific questions they should expect for digital video production? Hmm. Well, basically if you look at the rating sheet, they're going to ask you about if you look, if they're pretty much going to be looking at the rating sheet when they ask you questions. Carla, you might have more experience with your judges at the state level. Well, that would be what I would say too, and I, w I was trying to pull up a rating sheet on, on another screen I have over here, but I would say about your development process, what uh, software, what tools maybe that you used in producing the video, I think those would probably be pretty common questions that you might get. But keep in mind, the digital video, at least at the national level, is prejudged, so all that is done beforehand, so you're just presenting and you have to explain why you did what you did to to on site. That's great. Um, the next question is from Wisconsin FBLA. Um, they want to know what books or resources would you recommend for an event like Networking Concepts, and are there any tips that you can recommend to students and advisors of what they can study beyond a textbook? Wow, that's a question everyone asks us. For high school, there's two major publishers. You have Cengage and you have Glencoe McGraw-Hill. You need to go online. All your teachers, go, go check your math department out or your IT department, depending on how your school's set up. See if you can borrow books from those teachers. Go online and Google questions. Um, so there's not, a, there's not one specific book necessarily. As I stated earlier, you just need to you just need to find those books that the various teachers have, and the teachers get a lot of complimentary books. 
So go to your technology teachers. I promise you they do have some books you can use. Look at your glossary words and read your end of chapter summaries. That's your best bet. Yeah. And I would go back to that um, online reference guide and look at those uh, competencies or the things that you're going to be tested on and use those as you're studying and, and looking at those textbooks and, and going to Google or, or to whatever your favorite search engine is to, to look those things up. Google is definitely your friend. Google uh, is your friend. The next question comes from Tennessee FBLA. They want to know what is a good way to prepare for who's who. Uh, I guess who's who is a competition that we often don't talk about, but what is a good way for a student to prepare for that? Well, truthfully, who's who is a state event. Um, it, there's no preparation for a national. The state person, um, each state is allowed to nominate or submit one person for who's who to national. So there's, there's no criteria. It's up to the state. So that, that's a state competition, not a national competition. Great. Um, the next question comes from Wisconsin FBLA. Uh, he wants to know, how can he make recommendations for updating a competition's questions? So if a test is taken and you feel that some of the questions are out of date, what are the steps necessary um, to, you know, voice your opinion and talk to someone that um, has a hand in those questions? Great. Well, there's two things here. At the, national at the national conference itself, if you're taking that objective test, there's a sheet of paper for you to write down um, these questions are out of date or these questions may not be correct. So, And we take all that back to the office. We look at them. We delete questions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, to submit new ideas or changes, we'd love for you to do that. And a student can do it. An advisor can do it. It, doesn't, it comes from all levels. We have Carla is on the, what we, uh, Donnie indicated, National Awards Program Committee. It's made up of five FBLA advisors and state people and five PBL advisors and state people. They may meet in September of each year to review guidelines. We're looking at new guidelines to modify guidelines, but we need input from everyone to see where we should be moving forth to. So if you look under uh, the competitive events, there is a page there about how to submit things. And basically, you're just going to submit your ideas, you can submit new guidelines, you can submit suggestions for improvement, and they will all be reviewed. If we can get them by the end of May, They'll all be reviewed in September, and then we'll see whether we go forth or make modifications. We'll then get back to you on them. Great. Um, it's great that I see all these questions coming from all over the United States. Um, and another great thing about these Hangouts is that we can all be from all over, from Missouri to rest in Virginia where it's snowing, to <laughs> South Carolina where it's sunny, um, you know, all over. And the next question comes from Sunny, California. Um, from John F. Kennedy FBLA, and they'd like to uh, talk a little bit about desktop publishing. What are some key aspects that judges are looking for on the production test, so the things that are scored before conference, and then also what are some of the main points or some main tips that you have for people that are taking team on-site tests? Carla, do you want to talk about the production, desktop production? Sure. <laughs> Because the rating sheet, uh, that varies wow. with whatever the uh, the problems are. There's not a whole lot that you can look at ahead of time. So that is something that's harder to study for. But if you look at the guidelines and, and what's expected of that test, I think you would get um, a better idea of what's expected. You know, a lot of times just looking at magazines and publications that are out there now would give you an idea of what a uh, pro professional um, brochure, flyer, whatever would be. So, you know, I would try to, to incorporate some of those. And using the, the best design guidelines that you're learning in your classes, you can't go wrong with that. You cannot go wrong with that at all. What, what the judge is saying, keep in mind, if they, you create a logo, it needs to be on everything. Um, you want to keep it simple. You don't want to mix fonts too much. Um, you don't want to, you want to have it so it flows. You don't want to, you want to have wider versus smaller margins if you're doing, let's say, a brochure. Um, color scheme is, you know, one of, you don't want to mix 20 colors in a publication, you know. So you just need to keep it simple and you need to carry your theme through and make it so it flows and it's easy for the reader to look at. And make sure you don't have any typos. Yeah, that's great. 
the next question is from Carol in Pennsylvania FBLA about emerging business issues, which I competed in in high school. Um, the question is, should they and should these teams be prepared to defend both the negative and affirmative, or do they just have to defend one of them? Oh no, no, no! At the national, you're going to choose. You 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 won't know until you come. Um, to your time slot to whether you have a firm to a negative. So you need to be able to go both ways. And when you say choose, you mean it will be assigned they'll, to you? They'll be, well, they'll, they'll pull out, you'll pull out a slip saying affirmative and negative. Great. Um, we have some questions coming in live. Um, what are the deadlines for entering events at the NLC? And I know we have different ones for um, membership deadlines based on division. So can we get an answer on that? Yeah. Okay. The state people have to send in all their competitors by May 10th to the national office. And all, and all prejudged events are also due, but must be received by May 10th. Now, we also know that there's a lot of changes that states make because, you know, you're just finishing your state conference. You're not sure if you can go. So names can be changed up till the first Friday in June. Come the first Friday in June, once the state gives me all their names, there will be no additions to that. That's it. You can always drop, but you can't add with that. The production tests, like right now, you're getting ready for your state conference. And some of you might be in computer applications or word processing or database. Um, you'll be taking a production test. We'll be sending those production tests out to the states next week, in fact, for them to then give you the state winners. And they'll do back the, I want to say it's the third fr uh, Friday in May, which I want to say it's the 17th, to the national office. Great. And then what about like membership deadlines? Like I'm in PBL. Well, membership and still... deadlines for FBLA it was March 1, and we'll be closing it down. We're just processing all our March 1 members, um, and dues had to be paid by then. Um, if, if you didn't pay dues, you can still come to conference late, but you had, to compete, you had to have March 1. For Phi Beta Lambda, it's April 15th. So PBL members, you better get your money in now so you can compete. Yes. That means for PBL members, it's still not too late to recruit. So... <laughs> Go out and recruit and get new chapters. We can do that too. Um, also, how many students can advance from state leadership conferences to national leadership conferences? Two different things for for FBLA for the high school. Um, for well, I'll take this back for both for both of them. For all what I call just the objective test, the singleton test, like what I call pencil and pen test, uh, each state can submit three people, move three people on to the national conference. Any event that is like a two-party event, including like computer applications or a public speaking or a performance event, um, every state can move either two individuals or teams forth to nationals. Now, for FBLA, though, competitors, an FBLA member may only compete in one national event. However, a PBL, a Phi Beta Lambda member, may compete in two events at nationals. So there is a big difference there. Absolutely. Um, next question comes from Veronica um, in middle level FBLA Alabama, and she wants to know, and I think this is going to be more of a state question, but do middle school students have any online testing before state? That would be a state issue. Um, we don't offer any, from the national viewpoint, we send all of our tests to the states, and it's up to the states to administer them however they do them. All right. Um, the next question is from Raphael in Kansas PBL. He wants to know, will he need to bring an extension cord or will electricity be available in the area of presentation? Well, if you're talking about national conference, you're okay. We, we will provide an LCD projector, have a setup, and have power. If you're using a Macintosh, you'll have to bring, in, bring the device to hook it up to your LCD. For your state level, um, every state difference. Carla, since she works with the state, I'll let her <laughs> answer that question. You know, we, we'll have a power cart available in Missouri too, but having been that local advisor, I always carried everything I needed. You know, maybe maybe you do need one. If you have room in your suitcase, doesn't hurt to take one. Check with your state person before your state conference to see what they provide, because every state provides different things. It's, a lot of it's a monetary or they don't have, you know, space, so you need to check with your state. National, we will provide it. And just to clarify, for those of you that have Macintoshes like myself, you're going to need one of these adapters <laughs> if you plan on going to conference and using your computer because of the proprietary adapters that 
um, Apple puts on the MacBooks. You won't be able just to use it without purchasing one of these from either Apple, Walmart, Amazon, you name it. You're just going to yeah. need that VGA adapter. So very important. Or bring your own projector or bring a Windows. So um, that is an excellent point that I'm glad you brought up. Um, the next question I have is from Virginia FBLA wanting to know any tips for a future business leader? Well, it's like job interview. What I would do, this is what I always tell when I interview students, is you're applying for a future business leader, so you need to make sure you let those judges know all your FBLA activities, everything you've done. Also on that resume, put those FBLA activities up front. It's not a job interview. Your employment goes in the back, so they're looking at all your involvement, within FBLA, your leadership development, as well as your other activities that you've done in the school. Like I said, your employment is at the bottom of that particular uh, resume. And, and one thing, if the judge asks you when you're in Future Business Leader, you know, what's your favorite organization that you're involved in in high school? Don't Folks, say something else. Don't say anything but FBLA, please. <laughs> and, and <laughs> one of my own students did that. so. It, it, it needs to be FBLA. We love our other CTSOs, but in this event, FBLA needs to be the answer. And FBLA is an organization, not a club. That's right. And an advisor is spelled with an E. E-R. <laughs> <laughs> Just those little nuances that you get from being a foobler. Um, so next question comes in from Twitter. They want to know any tips that you have for FBLA e-business, not only in the presentation, but really on that site itself. In the, I'm sorry, what was the first part of that? FBLA e-business. Oh, e-business. Um, you have a topic in this uh, chapter management handbook, the topics in there for you to develop. It is, think of it like it's e like e-commerce. So like if you were going shopping, it's like an e-commerce website. So that's how you're going to set it up. Um, it's similar to a website, just a little bit different, because you do have to have how they're going to buy it, though it's not going to go live because we don't want anything to be put through PayPal or anything like that, but um, you're, you're, you just look at your topic and develop it every year they change. Great. Next question, uh, what events will have internet availability at the NLC? Again, I'm sorry, you were cut off. I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. What events are going to have internet availability at oh. the NLC? Um, we provide, at the National Conference, we provide it for e-business. Uh, website and electronic career portfolio. Those are the three that we provide internet access for at this time. Now, if you have other suggestions for improvement, again, remember I said about sending the email in with suggestions to how we can improve the events. We always like to hear from our members yes. and advisors. Um, the next question that we're going to get is uh, from Forest High FBLA in Florida uh, from Kelly. She wants to, she has two questions. The first one, where can she find an example of um, state websites, and what are they and what they are looking for at a competition? Um, so okay. probably she wants to know more where she can find examples of past websites made. Well, state websites are again it's not a national event. You know what I do to find all my states? I just Google out that state. Like I, I Google out FBLA. Uh, Florida FBLA and I find the FBLA Florida website. I go about Missouri. That's how I find all my state websites. Carla? I mean basically the, the same way because we don't uh, post the top 10 winners anymore do we on um, web design or e-business or any of those? We, or, we, we post all of our winners but we don't we don't necessarily have the websites and those okay. are not state websites those are just whatever the project is. Yeah, so if you're developing, some states do have a state website event, if that's what she's referring to. Um, we have a really great technical question posted on our FBLA event page, which you can still ask questions to us via Twitter, Facebook, or the YouTube comments. This question is about the statistical analysis. Um, mm -hmm. And it, is, it says that the study guide states that competitors can use a financial calculator. What do we consider a financial calculator? 
Is that a TI-83, TI-84, TI-Inspire? Can they use a um, CAS, computer algebraic system? Basically, they don't want to bring something that they practice with and then be told they can't use it. So what's the limitation? And then um, will it be provided, or should they bring their own? That's a very good question because they keep changing so much on me. Um, the only thing we provide is a simple adding, we'll subtracting function. calculator. So, um, Donnie, help me out on this in college. I really, um, I, I don't know the latest. What what I would say, um, I, at least what we're allowed to use and what you're allowed to use on the SAT is probably a good indicator. Okay. Um, you can use the TI-83, TI-84, can't use the TI-86. If it has a CAS, computer algebraic system, meaning it can solve for X or solve for N, it's probably not acceptable because the SAT and the ACT wouldn't accept it. Um, so I'm thinking if the SAT is one of their acceptable calculators on the college board, it's acceptable for us. But I mean, that's, that's probably more up to your judges. I would definitely contact your state if you haven't competed already. And if you have a question before nationals, that's definitely a question you could ask before you get there. And, and, we, and that's a very good question, and we will research it out and try to put it on the websites and get information out to let so, people know. Um, and I know, what Carla, did you have a point you wanted to bring up? Well, um, there's embedded calculators in the online testing system, so I guess that's another thing that for to check is that what type of calculator is going to be embedded in the testing system because I had the same question when my PBL students were testing about what type of calculator. So that is a, a good part, point and it was just a regular calculator like what's provided at Nationals was what was embedded so in the right. online testing. So. Um, so the next question is um, are there any presentations that just must be submitted the presentation must be submitted on a disk instead of actually being allowed to present the um, presentation in the competition? At the national level, no. State levels, many states, yes. And that would be up to your state. I, I, I wouldn't know what state does. So check with your states because I know some states that's what they do. But at national, every, there's nothing like that at national. Okay. Um, we're going to give everyone one last final call to submit your questions via our YouTube comments, our Facebook event page, or by tweeting at us. Also, you can always tweet, do any of those means to ask questions. We have people checking the internet and social media almost 24-7. We have to get some sleep somewhere, but seven days a week we're answering your questions, so make sure if you have any questions regarding competitive events or anything else that we can help make your membership experience better, please be sure to let us know. But it looks like that's all the questions we have. So ladies, thank you very much for taking the time and answering the questions for our members and advisors. I'm sure they appreciate it. Um, if you all have any other questions, please make sure to forward them on to the national office. Or if it's a state-related question, be sure to email the appropriate parties at your state. Be sure to tune in for our next webinar Wednesday, which will happen on March 27th. It's a very special webinar. It will be presented by the March of Dimes. They're our national service partner working together for over 40 years for healthier, stronger, stronger babies. And we hope that you'll tune in and learn a little bit about what we can do to help increase the strength of our partnership. Also, this broadcast, along with the 4 o'clock Eastern um, broadcast, was recorded and placed live on YouTube. So if you would like to show this to other advisors, other members, or share it around your state, just throw it on your Facebook page. Be sure to do that, and don't forget to tag FBLA National Center in the Facebook post. Thank you all very much for coming tonight, and we hope you have a great evening, and may success be ever in your future.